You have found the Spiritual Transformation Podcast with Mary Beth. This community is for you. If you're a spiritual junkie like me and you love meeting new people who are spiritually gifted and spiritually transformed because every week I have the privilege of talking to a new spiritual teacher, people who can channel messages from the ascended master realms. I get to talk to psychics and mediums, spiritual healers every week. So go ahead and subscribe if this describes you. If you're into near-death experiences and spiritually transform transformative experiences, please hit subscribe and join this community. Now today, I have a special guest for you. His name is Brandon Sharpon. Sharpon say, oh, I knew I was going to mess it up, Brandon. No, you got it. You got no, it. You got no, it. you say it. You say it the French way. You say it. Go ahead. Uh, I'll say it. Uh, Charpentier. There you go. All right. Cool. Yeah. Cool. 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 So meet Brandon. I'm just going to leave off for that. Meet Brandon, a musician, artist, philosopher, spiritual guide, dancer, singer, rapper, and comedian. Uh, you guys, his musician name is Absolute, and I am going to leave all the ways to, to connect and follow him in the description box in the show notes below or the comments based on whatever platform you're watching this so brandon thank you so much for accepting my invite mm -hmm. i'm glad to be here thank you for inviting me i'm looking forward to our chat so brandon and i we met on instagram and um you kind of made a joke at first like you know we'll talk about that when i'm on your podcast and I was yeah. like, ha, ha ha whatever. And then, and then I started to really watch you and pay attention to some of the stuff you had to say. And I was like, oh, he's actually a perfect match for my spiritual transformation podcast. So here we are. Yeah, that was hilarious because uh, we just started vibing, right? And like I was commenting on your posts, and then you were, you know, you know, commenting back. And then I, I was, I was hesitant. I was like, should I make this joke? I at to be honest, at, at that time, I didn't know you had a podcast yet. And so oh, I was just, funny. but our, our conversation sounded like a podcast. So I'm like, is this our first podcast? And then like, you know, a couple of days That's later. hilarious. I totally thought you knew. And I thought you were just like, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. You know, that's yeah. what I thought you're, that's what I thought you were doing. And I didn't take it. It's you seriously at first. And then I was, then I started to watch some of your content and I was like, Ooh, he's got a lot of good stuff to say. I could tell that you've been really digging in as I have since the child, really, um, to see a truth seeker, a truth seeker. You're like you like you're in your biography, you're a spiritual guide. Um, you have so much to offer in knowledge. So here you are. And so let's start out um, talking about maybe initially when you first got into when you first started digging in how did that how did that look how did that happen for you when did when did you kind of wake up to spiritual stuff well, well um like i said uh i've told you before this is where it all started for me was this book called i am that mm. um it it's not written by sri nisagardata maharaj but it's uh translated from his conversations with seekers who came and asked him questions. And uh, and so, yeah, this book I read at 17 for the first time. I've read it probably two or three times now. Um, and that's, that's really what kicked off my spiritual journey. But before that, um, my dad, when I, was, when I was 14 or 13, my dad paid me to read this book called uh, The Power of Your Subconscious Mind by Joseph Murphy um and it's it's much about affirmations and yeah reprogramming your subconscious mind mm -hmm. and so i mean that's definitely in the realm of spirituality but that's um yeah i don't know uh but, but it's psychology say, but it's also it does you're right they they do it's interwoven because yeah. of the fact that i think spirituality a lot of it and people don't recognize this for the most part it's it's about empowerment empowering yourself Right, right. And so, yeah, that's, I'd say that book is where it all began. And then this really kicked it off. Uh, I am that, that's, uh, that just kind of like, that kind of flipped my world upside down in a way that was, it was both good and bad. Uh, I'd say it was like, I don't know if I was ready for it, uh, but I, I wouldn't really change a thing either. So, yeah. Yeah. I love it. So any other books that kind of, that you would, 
either recommend or that really got you um, digging deeper as a truth seeker? Yeah, yeah um, I didn't bring this one up, but it's right in front of me here. Uh, Eckhart Tolle. Oh, yeah. You know, well, known, I know Eckhart. well known guy in the community. Um, so I read, I believe I read The Power of Now first. Mm -hmm. And then, and then a new earth, my dad got me this copy as well. And, uh, that th those two books were amazing. And recently, uh, within the past year, I got this book, uh, Dr. Wayne Dyer. Also, I should mention that Dr. Wayne Dyer has literally been a part of my life since I was a kid mm -hmm. because he, he was a major proponent of spiritual transformation in my parents' life. Uh, so both my mom and dad were, you know, all about Dr. Wayne Dyer. And, and so their, his philosophies came through them to me. And so, uh, so yeah, so basically, I grew up on Dr. Wayne. And I, I got this in recent years, this is basically Dr. Wayne's take on the Tao Te Ching. So this is all about Lao Tzu's teachings, mm -hmm. uh, the Tao Te Ching. And it's basically he, he takes excerpts of the daddy ching and translates it well he he puts his own spin on it um that's you know i guess more practical for one to apply to their life yeah yeah wayne dyer is awesome like uh, and it's so funny i'm gonna throw in a little i'm gonna insert this little story about how i came to know dr wayne dyer i was very young and he had hair and um <laughs> says so back, and you know i'm going on 50 this year so this was a long time ago but i remember i walked in my living room i still lived at home with my parents and i hear his voice and no one was in the room i don't know how the tv got on but it feels to me this was meant to happen in every way shape and form but i hear his voice and he's got a beautiful voice of course he's he's mm -hmm. transitioned at this point but um i walk in and he's on pbs giving us one of his spiritual talks just um, and so I just sat down and just I ended up binging him. It was like hours and hours of Wayne Dyer, like just on PBS. And I never we never had that channel on. So that was um, I got into him and then he led me to Louise Hay. And it just became, you know, one thing leads to another and another yeah. and another. And then yeah. just when you think you can't learn anything new, that it leads to somebody else who's even like, wow, you know, this opened up a whole brand new world yeah and that's the thing about dr wayne is he was always expanding like he, yes. he didn't just stay with one thing like uh he was, he was always learning new things and then teaching those things in his he travel the world and and like he uh he helped anita morjani uh with her journey and mm -hmm. uh just uh he just kept expanding so he, he never became boring to listen to and like you said he had this this voice, the, uh, this low voice, uh, this powerful voice yeah. that it's just it's it's like medicinal to listen to. And I should mention uh, one of the best things that I've been listening to from him are the Ah Om meditations. The yes, manifestation meditations. And there's something crazy that when he uh, when his voice is coming through my speakers with the ahs and the ohms and minds being projected out. There's this reverberation that is, is otherworldly. It's just, uh, it's phenomenal and, and powerful. And like, so like the last time I did it, like I was brought to tears. Like I, I had to go well, because I was thinking of him and he's passed. Right. But, yeah. But like, I was trying not to cry. Like the whole time it was just so powerful. And that's right about his voice, like medicinal. That's very interesting. Yeah, because it's like this weird, like almost impossible combination of powerful and relaxing. Like I would fall asleep to him. I, I still listen to his meditations, you know, like the I am ones and things like that. And I just, I just, you know, I just love him so much. And um, so I wanted to, you, you brought up meditation. I just brought up meditation. What does meditation look like for you? because different people I've noticed have very, and I have my own, I have a pretty unique definition, but what is your definition, your personal? Yeah, it's it's amazing. Just like, like the word love, everyone has their own interpretation of it. And meditation, oddly enough, everyone has their own interpretation of what meditation is. Uh, for me, uh, to try and put it in a nutshell, it's it's just being uh, still and, and aware and it's, it's about just noticing thoughts 
uh, mm. as they come and go and not engaging in them, but you just, you kind of, you're paying attention to your psyche and what it keeps bringing up. And, and essentially I just watch the thoughts come and go like clouds in the sky. So the sky is my mind and the thoughts are these little clouds. And the more and more I disengage from the thoughts, the, the smaller the clouds get and the lighter the clouds get. And eventually I'm just left with this sky of my mind. And then, uh, I mean, you can go for as long as you want. Uh, but yeah, I, I just, I start to have like these wakeful dreams. I start to have like these, these dream visions yeah. that happen um, while I'm still fully conscious. I'm not asleep, but I'm having dreamlike visions. And that's, that's one direction it can go. Um, but still like, I don't, I don't engage. I'm not like trying to lucid dream or like manipulate the dream. I'm just watching it. I'm just being yeah. present. And another technique uh, that I find useful is, is you either focus on your breath to, to get you out of your thoughts. You keep refocusing on your breath. It's fine. You don't have to beat yourself up. Thoughts are going to come and go. Uh, and in the beginning, like wildfire, like, cause <laughs> uh, cause a lot of people think, oh, meditation means I have to stop my thoughts and then they beat themselves up. Oh, I'm having all these thoughts. That's not mm -hmm. the point. The point is to notice them and just to not, as Muji says, you don't log in to the thoughts that the thoughts are knocking at your door. Oh, I love that. Yeah. You don't don't, don't log answer, in. Don't answer the door. Don't log in. Just notice them. Um, so yeah, don't, don't beat yourself up. You're going to have thoughts and that's perfectly fine. But focus on your breath. You can have a point where you keep refocusing, or you could just use every use all your senses at once is another technique. You just notice everything that's happening. So you'll notice a noise, but you don't judge that noise. You notice a temperature, you don't judge the you don't analyze it. You just notice you continuously just noticing things. And what that does is that reroutes your attention to the present moment. You're constantly just noticing things that are happening in the present moment, uh, non-judgmentally, non-analytically, and therefore your mind rests and you're fully in what, what uh, Joe Dispenza would call the unified field. You're, mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're nobody, you're nowhere, you're no time, you're just fully uh, immersed in the unified field. And that's, that's my- That's awesome. I've never really heard that about focusing on everything so that is, is it would you say that is that grounding is that the word is it grounding yeah okay. like you're grounding yourself in the present moment okay so. cool and i'm so happy you brought up a couple things i wrote down so i didn't forget so because you brought up breath work and and focusing on your breath and where were you when i first learned how to meditate because I was not, I was taught about like, oh, you just got to have that complete empty mind. And, yeah. and what, what is really, when, when I heard this, when I finally heard this years later, it's not about having zero focus and having no thoughts. It's about focusing on one thing. And that gave me such relief because before that meditation would give me anxiety. Like you tell someone with anxiety, stop your thoughts. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. You don't, yeah. it's not, by the way, that's going to just make you have way more thoughts than normal. Yeah. <laughs> so, exactly. um, go into the, the breath, focusing on the breath or, or like, like Abraham Hicks would say, just the sound of the air conditioning, just focusing on one thing. It doesn't matter you have you like you like you said witness your thoughts observe or notice your thoughts but don't chase your thoughts you know just go oh i always say well, isn't that interesting you know and because some random crazy stuff pops up sometimes and that's normal mm -hmm. and so just know if you have more of an anxious chatter mind like i do or the monkey mind some people call it you know it's just focusing on one thing you don't have to completely have zero thoughts you're not doing it wrong you know and i needed somebody yeah. to tell me that and something else for people who have the um monkey mind chattery mind is guided meditations really help in the beginning when you're trying because again you're focusing on one thing and mm -hmm. yeah and just it i think breath work also just breath work in and of itself listening to a guided breath work meditation if you're someone with a really busy mind, that's going to be more beneficial. And you don't ever, I mean, what's your opinion? Do you think you ever have to do regular meditation if breath work's working? I like doing, excuse me, I like doing 
all types of meditation. Yeah. I just love to meditate and it's uh it ties in with another topic we're going to talk about which is hemisync the game yeah i was going to ask you if you wanted to talk about that sooner which that's essentially what it is is a guided meditation yeah that's it's very much focused on uh visualization and i think essentially one of the main goals i don't they don't really say it in there but it's being able to remote view and to to realize how powerful your imagination is and how you can heal yourself with your imagination like uh joe dispenza he healed himself using visualization he was fixing his back after his motorcycle accident like in his mind every day over and over and that's that's what he did um so so to get back to your main question yeah i do all types of meditation and to go further most of the time when i meditate it's either i'm laying down because i like to be completely comfortable i don't i don't do this sitting thing. same no, i'm with you yep no, i don't want any pressure on my back i just want to <laughs> melt into the nothingness so to speak right so i either lay down or the complete opposite i'm walking so uh, that's another thing i'm gonna be mentioning same with me talk. walking meditations or laying down i'm not a spiritually competitive person you know just whatever yeah. feels more comfortable to each person is what you should do i don't need to be uncomfortable to meditate Mm -mm. Yeah, like that, that's a like, I mean, that's probably like a Buddhist thing where they, they get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Yeah, um, that's true. I'm but, not <laughs> um, but the walking meditation is so powerful because uh, you're walking as if all of your dreams have already come true. And, and at the same time, I keep my mind clear. So I'm, I'm not really I'm not trying to visualize anything. I'm trying it. I'm once again, I'm focusing on my environment feeling yeah the sun against my face. I'm noticing cats and dogs, which is one of my favorite things to do is, is walk around with treats and feed the neighborhood cats. And so Aww. yeah, walk, walking as if, as if your dreams are already done and you'll, and like instantly, I just like, you know, like shoulders back, chest out, like, like not like, like loud and proud, but just like, just happy to be alive. Like everything I want is already in my vortex um type feeling of, your future would be yeah like joe dispenza yeah. very joe dispenza like you got to exactly. feel your future and um as if yeah. it because as long as you know since i'm a law of attraction coach too you know like, as long as we keep thinking something's in the future we're going to keep that distance between <laughs> ourselves yeah. and that future so we've got to bring that future self create that identity now in this moment because mm. like eckhart Tolle would say Eckhart Tolle or Tolle, I don't even know how to say his totally. name. I think totally. Totally. Yeah, I've heard of both. I was just covering everybody. But um, yeah, it's the powers. All of our power is now because yeah. that's all we have is now. The yeah. past is gone. The future hasn't happened yet. All of our power is now. So bring that future into the present moment. And that is where we're creators. That's how we create. Yeah, yeah. Because you, you don't want to focus on the lack of you want to mm -hmm. focus on on what it feels like to have that thing for it all to already be with you in your vortex or, or, or manifested right now. And yeah, with the walking meditations, I also I, I keep my mind clear. I don't think you I don't know if you have to. Well, you don't have to do anything. <laughs> yeah, that's but, true. Uh, but uh, but even I don't know if Joe Dispenza really focuses on like keeping your mind absolutely clear. It's more just about like walking in your power. Mm -hmm. um, but I keep my mind clear because I just I love to have a clear mind. It's just yeah, it's serene, you know. So I wanted to talk about uh, one of the talking points that we were discussing would be, I'm going to skip around a little bit because this one fits in pretty good, spiritual misconceptions, because we're talking about how all of this shoulda, coulda, woulda in the spiritual community and all the rules. Um, so what are spiritual people supposed to be like, like that whole thing? Uh, tell me like, tell me like what you, what you hear people say, and then what you really think about that. <laughs> okay, well, when I started my journey, I had probably the same misconception everyone has. You're supposed to be a saint. You now yes. you're you are the new incarnation of Christ conscious. You're now a saint. You you can't swear. You got you 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 know what I'm saying? Like you can't be bad. Quote turn, turn the turn the other cheek kind of situation where you let people to the point where you let people abuse you. I just forgive you and and yeah. you know 
go ahead and hit me on this side now. <laughs> yeah, you're you're a healer. You're just everyone who's in your prep. You're just you're healed. You're you're a saint now. You know that's that's the biggest misconception, and that's why like uh, people people in the spiritual community don't really like profanity. They're like, oh well, if you're spiritual, you don't say the f word or you don't say shit or like you know what I'm saying. Like it's it's this like idealism, I guess you could say. And and there's also like misconceptions about what a spiritual person's supposed to look like. Like yeah. I feel like I don't wear my spirituality other than maybe like this is a crystal, this is Kai and I. Like that's the most. But like like a lot of spiritual people, and no disrespect, I love these people to death. But like you know, they got the dreads, like they got the tattoos, and I love it. Like I love looking at it. I just I have no inclination or desire to to dread my hair to to pierce my ears or tap my face you're saying it's or, okay either way if you want to go all the way with that yeah. cool but you don't have to you don't have to look a certain way you can yeah. wear a suit and tie you can dread your hair you can be tatted from head to toe it doesn't matter what you look like mm -hmm. you can drive a harley you can ride a bike you can ride the sky train it doesn't matter uh that's not being spiritual isn't a facade it isn't a, a it isn't you're not putting on a play it's about being your authentic self and knowing that mm -hmm. that that mm -hmm. there's something beyond this surface layer of reality you know i love that that was the really good points and and i didn't know what your answer was going to be you know about that and i i never even thought about that with the, the way that people look but that's true like there's all these expectations both inside of the spiritual community community and outside too like there's a, just a lot of judgment. And speaking of judgment, I found like, I, I don't know if you're in any spiritual groups on Facebook, but I had to kind of get out of them because mm -hmm. you don't see more fighting than you do in there. And it's like, everyone's like, they're calling someone out on their ego. But then I'm like, but aren't you kind of in an ego trap? Cause you were calling them out, you know? And then you you know, it's just hilarious it's, to watch because I'm like, it's a loop. It's a loop. By the way, yeah. everything's an ego trap. We all have reactions. We all get stuck in our ego. It's okay. You know, just catch yourself. I mean, That's the point. Catch yourself. We're human. Yeah. The moment we're judging someone, you're now in the ego. You're saying, well, yeah. you're in your ego, blah, blah, blah. Oh, sh oh snap. You're no, in your I'm, ego telling me no. I'm in my ego. <laughs> yeah. So I, I was the same. I was in all these light worker groups, spiritual groups, and yeah, yep. yeah. I literally had to just get out because same. there was so much bickering and keyword self-righteousness i'm yeah. mm -hmm. self-righteousness i'm right you're wrong this is spiritual that's not spiritual this is how you do it uh it's just like y'all can keep it i'll just it, it, it makes your brain blow up and and at yeah. the end of the day it sounds like we're judging them right now but we're this isn't that you got you got blurry oh, there you are you're back yeah, it, this is quick. an observation you know we have to be able to have discussion we have to be able to observe things i've i've, I've always kind of thought that was fascinating like what's the difference between judgment and observation and what i think it is is what is that feeling you have when you're talking about it like if, if, if i don't feel like we're judging people i feel like we're having a conversation like an observational thing um not hateful it's just we have to point this stuff out because it's a it's a real issue it is a real issue in the spiritual community of, of people and uh, being hateful to each other and it's like you guys come back Come on. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, because spirituality essentially is like to the core. It's about unity and realizing yes. uh, realizing the oneness of life and, you know, the non-dual nature of life. And, and and another thing is that the ego, the ego isn't the devil. Uh, well, it can be a devil, but but the ego isn't to be eliminated. And the way I see the best way I can describe the ego right now is is that it's it's a tool it's a tool for functioning in society and and it's you know what like to have a bit of character there's nothing wrong with having some character like that's another misconception is that if you're spiritual you're just supposed to be quiet and you're just you're never supposed to make a peep and and you just you never get animated you never get angry that's and that's the bs in the spiritual i don't community. fit any of the spiritual stereotypes and i've been i've been in this, you know, mm -hmm. kind of delving into this as a truth seeker since I was a little kid, because my whole life has just been tons of paranormal experiences and spiritual stuff that I 
since I was really, really young, like as far back as when I was two or three years old. So it wasn't like I ever made a choice to be this way. It's just was, it just was this way. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. And, that's, and I'm loud. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm not, I'm not gonna just be quiet and just, I mean, that's the thing I as, and that's, that's one of the first things we started talking about is I had this reel <clears throat> talking about how non-duality is not the end all be all. But when I, yeah. when I first read this book, I I had that misconception. Now, like I gotta be a saint. I was like, I wanted to eliminate all profanity from my vernacular, my my mm. dialect, my dialogue. And I just wanted to be like this, this ghost. I literally, cause uh, I wanted to, I just wanted to be this like saintly ghost who didn't ever negatively or, or affect anyone and just kind of be in my own. Just not participate in the world. Yeah, my spiritual <laughs> little bubble of bliss, right? And that's, and so, and so that's why that misconception can, can be a, it can be a dark path because you're not connected. You're not connected to, to everyone. And so, and so, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, we are, we are spiritual. We're all spiritual beings, whether we acknowledge that or not having a human experience and we are, we already are spiritual already are. So we came here, we incarnated, you know, to have a human experience. And then it's, it doesn't even make sense to not allow ourselves to have that 3d human experience because I, you know, we already were everything was perfect and love and, and we're here to experience like polarity, you know, right. we're here to experience duality quite literally. So even though in the, the reality is I'm, I'm a non-dualist, like, you know, I believe we're all unity, oneness, but I want to have this human experience while I'm here. I want to experience some of the contrast and polarity and duality because that's why we're here. Otherwise yeah. we don't other, otherwise why be. So I think it's silly. Also, you know, it's easy to be, spiritual and in your little bubble when you never when you don't interact with people we get out there and mix it up in the world that's when you're really tested on your true like yeah. how how high of a frequency are you truly vibrating on i think it's eckhart tall or tolly who says if you think you're or it could be ram das it's either it's one or the other if you if you really think you're that spiritual go spend a week with your family and then mm -hmm. You know, like, and then during check back with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Go, 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 spend a, a vacation with your family during Christmas or Thanksgiving, and get get back to us, right? Like, yeah, because yeah. when we never test ourselves in the real world, and we're not mixing it up, and we just only, you know, we hide everything that we don't want to, you know, look at. Of yeah, course, the, the easy to be. Test, to, the true test of spirituality is experiencing the tumultuous waves, the ebbs and the flows, the turmoil. The, mm -hmm. you know, that's the that's the test of your spirituality. It's there's a quote by someone, uh, I don't know who it was, but it's, it says that all of man's problems stem from his inability to sit quietly in a room by himself. Ooh, yeah, that's right? so true. I mean, that's what I was doing. But that's not life. That's you're sitting in a room by us quietly by yourself. That's not why we're here. That's a, at least I mean, maybe it is for some people. Some people can go meditate in a cave and just disintegrate. And maybe that is their path. But for me, right. my choice, I want to live life. I want to experience the ebbs and the flows, the ups and the downs. And that's that's why. And then I, we know. try to stay as much on an even keel and a, a, a nice higher frequency i do say higher and lower by the way and i know that's another no-no in the spiritual community but i don't i i can't think of a better way um saying yeah. different i know it's like okay well i vibrate differently but to me since i've experienced really bad darkness in my life through addiction and all kinds of you know stuff a lot of dark things have happened to me throughout my lifetime to where i do i have experienced the dark it feels lower to me to experience fear and grief and anxiety and stress Th that feels lower than, mm -hmm. and I've also experienced bliss and light. I've had spiritually transformative experiences. And one of them lasted two weeks. That was bliss, joy. Oh, sorry. One of them yeah. was higher and one of them was lower because remember we're on earth mm -hmm. and, 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 and that is a polarity. And yes, it's also different, but to me, it's just easier to say, to speak in English terms. <laughs> Mm -hmm. and higher and lower, higher and lower. 
that's another thing that happens in the spiritual community is people start arguing over semantics. It's yes. like, we're saying the same thing, but how are we saying, oh, I like to say it this way. Oh, well, I like to say it. This way. Who cares? If or maybe they attach different meanings, you know, like, it's like, yeah, well, I'm saying this and you and you attach a different meaning. That doesn't mean I'm wrong. It means yeah. you put well, a different it, meaning than I'm putting out there. And the misconception with higher or lower, people see it as a hierarchical or hierarchical yeah. thing. They're like, they think it's like, oh, well, you think you're royalty and we're just a bunch of peasants. Like that's what people equate higher and lower with. But no, no, we're talking science. We're talking energy, vibration. Frequency rates. Frequency. If you're in a state of unconditional blissful love, that's, that's, that's literally like the vibrations up here. Well, if you're in like, uh, like guilt or, or, or shame or, or lust being the bottom, according to Joe Dispenza, lust is the dead. Last yeah. I'm not bottom. sure. I, I don't, I'm not sure I agree with that, but <laughs> yeah, I, I can't get down with that Joe, but whatever. Uh, but like Sorry, you're, you're, in a, you're in a lower like vibration. So mm -hmm. it, it's just, we're not talking hierarchy. We're talking science, quantum yeah. and quantum physics, quantum physics. Exactly. And there is like, and, and what higher means to me is faster because like when we look at through uh, energy through a microscope, higher is faster, it's faster. Mm -hmm. And it's and that's why it's that's why people who don't vibrate as high, they truly get annoyed being around people who vibrate high. It's a very annoying situation because mm -hmm. their vib their frequency, their vibe, their they're vibrating slower, quite literally slower. And then they're around someone with a high vibration. It's just like, oh, it's irritating. It's irritating. It's like t tuning into a station of music that you really hate. It's the same thing. Yeah. And then I know like from just studying near death experiences my entire life and well, not my entire life, but since I was 18, 17, 18, um, just uh, so many, I've heard like <laughs> I countless at this point um, when you and Dolores Cannon also talks about this, like actually when you when you die, there's all these different planes, like P L A N E S yeah. planes um, of existence, dimensions, and things where you go to where you're, it matches your vibration because you would be super uncomfortable, you know, any other way. So the the plane of existence you're on is it just matches your frequency. So mm -hmm. it's it's not even like a punishment or anything like that. It's just you're not gonna you're gonna go where you where you match. It's a vibrational match for you, just like in real life. Mm -hmm. you you meet up with your vibrational matches you know just kind of how it works definitely definitely and I've, I've heard everything from there being nine dimensions to 11 dimensions to now infinite like degrees of dimensions i've um, heard 12 so, wasn't it matthias de stefano says 12. Um, i've heard matthias say <laughs> nine matthias. and i've heard uh Car billy carson say 11 i've heard 11 i the number i've heard the most is 11 but I, the one I believe Where I got is, 12 is from. the one I've heard, the one I truly believe is the infinite, like, like there's eventually it's just this pool of dimensions. You know what I'm saying? Like there's all just varying degrees. Like you could say I'm in the 10th dimension, but then you, you go up to 10.1, 10. Oh 4, yeah. 10.0001, 10.002. Like it's like infinite varying degrees of dimensionality. It makes sense because if there's no time, you know, it's only linear here on earth, but really in, in the spiritual realms, times actually in reality, time stacked. Yeah. It's not, it's not linear from point A to point B. That's not how it works. And really so so that could happen. Dimensions are just a concept for humans to understand higher planes or higher energy to under to try and grasp what this universe and and beyond really is it, dimensions is to me it's another concept that we use to try and understand that but realistically i i don't think that we can ever truly know the all to know our brains like, would blow up we're not capable yeah. <laughs> exactly like our we would we would explode <laughs> you know? i agree i agree because yeah, so. sometimes i feel that way like i understand quantum physics well you know the you know basics but then sometimes and also depends on the day because like when i had my spiritually transformative experience i got all these downloads during it and i did understand quantum physics so i like to believe it's still in my head somewhere but mm. but like it's nothing like i was like so open to it. I got all those downloads and now I'm, I sometimes feel like, 
uh uh-uh, my brain, my brain cannot wrap around it because the more you think about it, the more overwhelming it becomes to think about things like dimensions and, and um, I, maybe it's just a, a way uh, to separate frequencies out. I don't know. I, I'm not even sure. I don't even understand it, to be honest. <laughs> Yeah, and, and you'll hear. Um, do you know of Robert Edward Grant? Have you heard? No. Of him? Okay, well, he's amazing. Amazing dude. I'll write him um, down. He he says this all the time. And I, you know, every I've, I've heard this from other people is that the more we know, the more we realize we actually don't really know. Don't know. I don't think there's mm-hmm. ever like being like, aha, I understand the entirety of, of universe and energy and existence and gravity and yada. Like, I don't, I don't think it's our, our, you know, in, in this avatar that we inhabit that, that we're ever really supposed to know the entire fractal holographic matrix universe. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Cause we do know when we're back, you know, well, I believe that we're all fractals of God. I believe we're all part of, or what I call source energy and that we are complete, but this is this is God's way of is experiencing God yeah. on different frequencies, on different vibrational frequencies, different levels. And, and we, it's kind of like God cutting God out, God cutting himself, itself, herself out from off from being everything, because how else do you experience something when you already are everything you have to kind of cut your put, you know? Yeah. Cut There's yourself so many, off from it. So many like br- like branches I could branch off to. Yeah. Um, but Alan Watts put it uh, succinctly that essentially, like say before the Big Bang, when God was whole and God didn't fractal out and like before the universe existed in theory, right? Uh, that And to tie in the Kabbalion that the universe is mental. It's a mental mm-hmm. conscious construct. It's all mental. And so we're essentially living in God's mind, so mm-hmm. to speak. Mm-hmm. And so God, like Alan Watts said, and this uh, this is, I'm paraphrasing, he, he said uh, that God was experiencing all that, that the universe could potentially offer, like all the pleasures and just all the greatest adventures and, and you know, you name it, all the pleasures of life. And eventually that became a monotony or becomes a monotony. It's like, how do you know pleasure if you don't know pain? Yeah. And how do you know adventure if you don't, or how do you know normalcy if you don't know? Gotta have the polarities. Or, or chaos. And so, so, so God decided to, you know, big bang, explode mm-hmm. out and fractal out in, into, you know, a inf- infinite amount of fractals. And, and that's what this experience is, is God experiencing God and learning about God mm-hmm. through God. It's all God source energy. Yeah. Um, and, and, and we all have God in our DNA. And I, yeah. I don't know, are you familiar with Greg Braden? We're doing a lot of name dropping. Oh, oh am I? I mean, we, how I love Greg know? Braden. Like, I just bought, I just bought the Divine Matrix. Ah, that's funny. I just started it. Um, He's been, one of my favorites. If you guys, whoever's watching viewers, if you guys don't know Greg Braden, you need to know Greg Braden. Yeah, look him up, look him up. Like I'm telling you, I, just to get right to the point of how my life really shifted, like seven months ago now eight months maybe billy carson times mm. joe dispenza like you get these two aspects uh these two these two consciousness and, and combined with my like childhood of spirituality and uh, it was just incredible like because like i said my netflix expired so my netflix at that point became forbidden knowledge and and uh spirituality esoteric uh podcasts um, shout out to Alex Ferrari, Next Level Soul. I and oh, yeah. by the way, oh I yeah, I didn't a year ago. I did not believe in reincarnation. Stop at all. Like I was like, I feel no. like I always just believe. Like I just kind of well, innately knew. Like I always me, knew it was real. I'll try. Okay, it's let me try and sum this up. I both believed in it and didn't believe it. And the way that people speak of it, like they they're speaking like. I, the person, am going to reincarnate, reincarnate as as another person or or entity or bird. Oh, or, okay, or I see where okay, you're going. So, and so, so the way I justified reincarnation was that okay, well, like we are all fractals of God, and 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 I see my soul. My soul is the universe. So essentially, how could we not reincarnate? The the universe is the creator of all that is. 
So if my soul is the universe, inevitably I'm already in, I'm already incarnated as everything that exists as a sentient life form and even non-sentient, even a rock is consciousness, right? So that's how I justified it before. But Billy Carson and 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 the the next level, so all the NDEs cracked my mind open even more. And and he explains that that there okay there is an oversoul that an is oversoul so, yeah an oversoul and bashar that, bashar gets you 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 know bashar oh i love bashar yeah so bashar yeah. that's where i learned about the oversoul and that like it does explains everything so go ahead yeah so there's there is the the source energy oversoul and that's how i justified it before and it still rings true but i think also there is the fractal soul right mm -hmm. there's fractal yes. souls and that billy carson explains it it's a frequency so like just for example, like my frequency might be 9.00123 and yours might be 9.00124, right? This like a radio frequency. So, so this, this is, is what is reincarnating is, is this particular frequency is reincarnating into, into a new avatar or, or a body or, you know, right. And God is a frequency. Form. And Billy Carson says, God is a frequency and it is our job to tune into it. You know, like mm -hmm. when we, God never disconnects. We are all fractals. We mm -hmm. disconnect ourselves. We're, you know, and, and we come here intentionally with amnesia though. So we can awake again because that's part of the fun. If we mm -hmm. came here knowing everything, then there's no game. This mm -hmm. is all a game to me. This is my opinion. Mm -hmm. It's all and game. To know, to know everything, like our, our brains are literally not like designed for that. Uh, cause like, I, like our brains would melt, uh, that this, this human experience, it, we're supposed to forget. We're supposed yeah. to have that amnesia. We're supposed to, uh, we're supposed to like, like we're supposed to basically gain an ego and become a person and then, and then become and then nobody, become nobody while still, you know, playing the role. Yeah. You know, I love that. Yeah. I love that. That's a cool way of saying it. So do you want to get into like um let's talk a little bit of let's just do it let's talk a little bit about conspiracy theorists oh, and that oh, term boy. you know that term that i know i've been called um countless times at this point i don't consider myself a conspiracy theorist I consider myself a truth seeker or truth teller but go ahead with your um ideas on that term yeah so conspiracy theorist and conspiracy theory is a, it's a derogatory term uh, created to dismiss anyone, to discredit anyone. And uh, there's there are um, terms that are synonymous with this. Um, and one is pseudoscience. So you'll hear the mm -hmm. word pseudo anyone who's not of mainstream science, if they're not bought out science, yeah. By, if they're not bought out by big pharma or or you know the main the science, yeah. Then, then they're pseudoscience. If it's not bought and paid for information, it's pseudoscience. Pseudo. So that's a, that's a synonymous term in the world of science. A conspiracy theorist is is pseudoscientist, and there there was another one. All of attractions. That. I've been told that's pseudoscience. And it's yeah. actually it's there's like technology that can like it measures frequency like there's the technology is there to prove this stuff that used to just be um wisdom ancient esoteric be, knowledge uh, woo -woo. Woo -woo. This right but it's, but reality yeah. is it's it's ancient knowledge this stuff is not yeah. new the law of attraction was just relabeled they stuck that label on it you know the secret but mm. it's 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 not a secret and it's not new it's ancient wisdom that was hidden Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it was hidden but it's not it's, new it's it's all about vibration right like your vibration attracts like uh, and everything's like, energy and that's vibration. that's science yeah. that's that's what i love is when we can explain these uh quote unquote woo woo things esoteric things uh with science when you can finally like conf you got the receipts so to speak like here's yeah. the science that's, yeah, and that's how I've come around to a lot, like even reincarnation, like the fact that I can understand it from a scientific level. Mm -hmm. Now I'm on board. Like, okay, reincarnation is a thing to me, you know, if, even more than my yeah. old understanding of the oversoul. Uh, but another term that's synonymous with conspiracy theorist, uh, and they called Dave Chappelle this when he went saying mm -hmm. they called him crazy. That yeah. Anyone, anyone in Hollywood that that gains a conscience, 
is is called crazy so you got pseudoscience they wake up to the reality of what's going on and then they're and yeah they're like, crazy because what happened to dave Chappelle is uh, like the 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 gist of the story was he was they were doing a skit and the way that people were laughing at the skit made him feel terrible like okay i don't know this story okay well, th this i mean i think this was one of the pivotal moments with dave Chappelle. is yeah they were recording a skit and the way people were laughing it was almost like they were laughing at him and at like i think it was about a racial thing so like at black people at the black community and and, and so he was like no 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 this like he had a feeling like this ain't right like now they're laughing at me not the vibe me. the vibe shifted yeah and so he realized like i'm not doing my people a service anymore like this is not it didn't resonate with his soul anymore mm -hmm. so he's like i'm going to africa and that's when that's when hollywood's like oh dave Chappelle turned down a million millions of dollar multi-million dollar deal he's in africa he went crazy oh that man went crazy but he didn't go crazy he went sane he he had an awakening in that mm -hmm. moment that this no longer it aligns with with me like this feels terrible i gotta change something and so he did that's yeah, awesome. I didn't know that story. Another and story, an, another, cons well, this, you could call this a conspiracy theory, but this is, this is fact. I don't know if it's just that they want every, every man in comedy to wear a dress in Hollywood or every black man in comedy to wear. What are wear you talking about? I've never heard this. Never, okay. Well, no, we'll I'm going to look into Cat, it now. Cat Williams recently spoke on this. Uh, uh, have you heard of Cat Williams? He recently yeah. broke the internet, went ultra viral um, I missed um because it. yeah so they like they i don't know if it's just about i don't i don't know if it's man or black man but they 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 want to get them to wear a dress on camera and i think it's about i don't know like a disempowerment thing or yeah. I, I don't really know the 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 ritual or the con like why the the cult the cabal wants them to wear mm -hmm. these dresses but it's probably something about like you know disempowering men the and balance and of power taking, yeah taking away their masculinity on camera mm -hmm. uh like a humiliation thing that you know mm -hmm. a willing a willing humiliation like jamie fox like jamie fox has worn a dress and, and uh, I don't think Dave Chappelle ever did it, but like a lot, like a lot of them have ended up doing the dress thing. Um, I'm pretty sure. Oh, Kevin Hart said he would never do it, but he ended up doing it. So he and did. You'll hear, yeah, okay. You'll hear Cat Williams uh, talk about Kevin Hart, and I got nothing against. Like I love Kevin Hart, but oh yeah, he he's did, funny. He did the dress thing. So yeah, to back to the topic of conspiracy theories, um, they're not. Just, just like anything in life, it's it's not 100% truth, it's not 100% false. Right. Some, there's a lot of lies that I've seen sprinkled into conspiracy theories that I know, like, okay, well, that's true, but why are you saying all this political shit in there, too? Because that makes it an agenda. That's where it crosses the line for me. And then it also, unfortunately, creates division. It causes people to be tribal. And then and, and, and it causes people to not believe things that are actually true just because they want to stick with their team. Well, this is my team. You know what I'm saying? My tribe. Yeah. And and then they dismiss everything because some dumbass comes in and puts political uh, jargon mm -hmm. inside of a because that's what that's what happens is people take advantage. Like there's a um, saying that's like never waste a good crisis. That's when you're going to mm -hmm. see all this shit come out. You're going to see all the because they're going to use a crisis when people are in fear it's the easiest time to control people when they're in fear and then mm -hmm. they discreetly not discreetly insert political garbage into things that are actually true and but but then it it, it shuts down everyone who doesn't who doesn't have that political affiliation mm -hmm. so any conspiracy theory that i hear that has like has a political crap mixed in i just mm -hmm. i don't I, uh uh no, yeah. that's not, that's not going to work. That's going to cause division, and I think that's put out there in order because the, we're we're weak when we or divided. We need to all yeah. come together. We need to that's, unify because one, one there the are major, elites running things. There are. Yeah, that's one of the major agendas is is to divide people instead divide of divide and creating, conquer. Like oldest a, trick in the book. A unified uh, global society. Um. So I I thought I wrote this down, but the definition even. The definition of conspiracy or to conspire 
is, is like to have a, like a secret plan again, like a, like a negative, like I should have wrote it down. It's, it's bad it's, intentions. It's bad, it's bad intentions. Yeah. And so that's why I think like the, the term was, was used to, to essentially discredit truth seekers. So what mm -hmm. conspiracy theorists are is they're seeking the truth and they're having to sift between a lot of BS and a lot of truth. Like there's a lot of stuff about the CIA that is true is not a conspiracy is yep. real look it up the receipts are out there is slowly they declassify information little tidbits where people won't care a lot of people just don't care because mm -hmm. they got other stuff to do um so so there's truth and there's there's false and 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 what was the point i'm trying to get to and so conspiracy theory is just a derogatory term for a truth seeker really in reality we're all just truth seekers in this realm and and yeah, so that's that's how I would sum that up, I guess. Yeah, and then um, I know you had mentioned that you gave up activism. Why is that? Mm. Online, at least online. Yeah. Um, well, because yeah, online because I realized like like people aren't people who aren't ready to hear the truth won't hear it. And I think um, there's a her hermetic philosophy that comes from the Kabbalion and the teachings of Hermes Trismegistus, uh, AKA Thoth, the Atlantean priest King. He, he said the, uh, let me, let me try and get this right. The, the, the teachings of wisdom. No, the, Oh God, I knew I was going to blunder this. I tried to remember I was the last thing, but the ears of wisdom are sealed to something, something who aren't ready to hear it. Something, something, you know what I'm saying? So Basically people get so dug into their truth. They, you, you slap them in the face with it. They, they can't believe anything other than like, it's kind of like cognitive dissonance, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, the lips of wisdom are sealed to the, the ears of, of what unready. Oh man. So somebody watching this, somebody watching this will put it in the comments for They're us. They're like, oh, you idiot. <laughs> no, but um, you messed it up. So, um, yeah, so here's the thing is a lot of people uh, aren't necessarily ready because they don't need to be there. Like there's a lot of people, uh, there's a lot Not of kids. Their, journey. their life right now is playing video games and playing sports and like they're living their life. They don't need to know the truth. They don't need to come to spiritual realizations they're on a third dimension path and it, it could be a very enjoyable one yeah. and very rewarding and there's nothing wrong with that uh like the spiritual like i said i wasn't really when i was 17 i wasn't i didn't need this yet i wasn't really that's ready. deep for 17 i don't I was, know yeah that's a, that's pretty deep i didn't have my dark night of the soul to need that you know to free myself of the dark night. yeah so, so it kind of flipped my world upside down but i wouldn't change a thing um but where was I going? Yeah. So, so yeah. Where was I going? Well, we were talking about <laughs> activism and, and you just were basically, you knew that people weren't going to be ready to hear yeah. anything that they weren't ready to hear. And not everybody needs to be on that path. Some people, I agree with you. Like some people signed up for this incarnation and just to live in a 3d they, not everyone has the same journey and we need to allow everyone to be on whatever journey they're on. Some people might've signed up to play the role of of the perpetrators, you know, the villains. Mm -hmm. And and that might be, they might, they could end up, I was having this conversation earlier. They could end up, they could actually in reality be very high, um, here we go with the high again, high level consciousness oh, yeah. souls. It, it, but yeah. you know, like, cause I've all the near death experiences I've heard there's, you know, your soul might request from another soul that you're very much, um, that's a very loving soul. Hey, hey, in this next incarnation, Brandon, will you, um, you, you like, here's my cat. We knew my co-host would join. Here's TJ. I, I couldn't wait. <laughs> he, 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 heard, he heard you talking. My dog, my dog, we got him. That's better though. That's better. The dog's not here. So, um, you know, like I could have asked you prior to this incarnation in between lives, hey, will you do, will you play the role of the perpetrator? Will you, will you murder me or something like that? And because I want to play the role of the victim. And you're mm -hmm. like, okay, yeah, I'll play the role of the perpetrator in this lifetime. But then the next lifetime, I want to be the victim and you're going to you're going to murder me, you know, because we're all just like here to experience that reality. So in, in, in some uh, from what I've heard in these near death experiences is that actually these really high conscious level souls, they will lower their frequency to to play that role like they will do yeah, and, that 
in yeah. like the, the soul contract. I'm it's sure a sacrifice for them to do it. And it's actually, they're doing there. It's a gift and, and, but we can't see it because we're in 3d. So we don't have that, that level of it's, it's, it's a high way of looking at things. And also, I don't know if you've, I've recently only heard of uh, a vacation life where some people have an easy life. To Didn't take I tell life. you that? Like, Wasn't that me that told you that the other day? I, might, I was just talking been, about it the other day, vacation so life. I might've heard it in Next Level Soul, like Ferrari brought it up. Um, because like, uh, that say, could be like, where I heard it. They, in their previous lives, like they were in a war and they were like, you know, warring and then they were in the Holocaust. And then they're like, you know, I, I want to come back, but you know, give me a break. I yeah. want this vacation. I want it easy. I'm going to be then, in like, Malibu. Nothing goes wrong in their life. Yeah, I'm that's gonna the vacation I'm going to be in Malibu life. and I'm just going to be creating content online and drive my Ferrari, you know, like, yeah. you know, and, and then I died. And then there's a yeah, good so. chance that's where I heard it too, because I've only heard about it in the past few months somewhere. So yeah, yeah. I was like, that's badass. Huh? Vacation life. Because you, you kind of see people like that. So when you're scratching your head about how come this person just seems to get whatever they want and they, you know, they're not like, and then it makes you not believe in karma anymore sometimes, right? You're like, wait a minute, mm. <laughs> but maybe they're having their vacation life. And guess what? That's okay. Cause you're going to get one too. Mm. Yeah. And I mean, regardless of a vacation life, I think life, <laughs> life is always of light and dark, always of yin and yang. And then there's always ebbs and flows, even, even to the most privileged children with silver spoons, like they all got to go through it in one way or another. Uh, like, cause if, if they're handed everything, then their, their identity is kind of like, they well, don't evolve. I, you don't, you evolve gonna... more in the hard times and the dark times. You That's when you grow and we're here to expand. So a vacation mm -hmm. life, isn't going to be a life of growth and expansion. It's, it's going to be it's just, I think fun. It's, yeah. It's just, uh, it's a more privileged life. You could say when with like mansions and Ferraris, but there's still yeah. like the ebbs and flows. But anyway, to get back to the point, the reason I quit activism is because I realized and to just this is the only way I can put it is, is that shouting at people online is not gonna <laughs> change anything like like, True that. Even, like that was the thing is when I when I started learning of all these theories uh and all this truth that I was seeking uh, I was like well everyone's got to know this now y'all got to know what's happening what the CIA does what the cabal y'all everyone's got to know you got to know about this so I'm just shouting it from a rooftop and just mm. put my soapbox stand on my soapbox your just, intentions were good man yeah I'm and... just I, I wanted to save the world mm -hmm. I wanted to be a, like uh, I just wanted to save the world and like be a huge proponent of people knowing this but then you, you know it was short lived. It, you know, it lasted a while. And then I'm just like, this, this is going nowhere. This, like, I'm not getting the results. I'm not getting the feedback I thought I would. Uh, and people are just like, dude, like, we just want to live our lives. We, we got kids. They want to watch, you know, Disney movies, you know, so. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, I, I, <laughs> I see what you were telling people. But <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, and so, and so I still do, uh, I do a form of act activism, but it's it's like it's I don't know I I don't know that I can articulate how I do what I do, but I guess I just you're a role model, you Brandon. I've seen your content. You you you're putting out an example, and that's the way people learn. People don't learn when you're yelling at them or or spreading fear or you know they they learn when they watch you as an example and and that's that's what I do too. We're role models for people and and the people who are ready to hear and they will mm -hmm. they will hear you. The people who aren't it's like they're on it tuned into a different radio station. They're not going to hear you and they're not even going it, to it's it, it's falling on deaf ears. Exactly. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. And and one yeah one thing i do is uh, is i want to lighten the mood so to speak and i want to have fun every single day like like if i had one purpose in life it's fun like i know that you can't i don't have fun all the time like i didn't like have, have fun this morning like trying to scramble and make sure everything's perfect but i'm having a lot of fun right now and and that's that's my, one of my main things is to lighten the mood uh and to have fun and show people that 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 you know we we don't need to take life so seriously there's yeah. another quote i don't know who who this quote is by but uh, i think it's alan watts but it's like why take seriously what the gods made for fun and i think I it is that, alan watts yeah I, I took i took that to heart and um another one 
Uh, We're going to have so many corrections in our comments. No, that wasn't Alan Watts. That was Neil deGrasse Tyson, you idiot. (laughs) (laughs) Go ahead and correct us. You'll help my algorithm. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. Yeah. More comments, the better. Let us know how Even if they're negative, we'll take them. (laughs) But um, yeah. So yeah, I just, I just want to have fun and lighten the mood. Okay. and, And my point being is that we can't suffer enough to change the world. We can't feel bad. That sounds enough. Abraham. That yeah, sounds like Abraham Hicks. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to be a broken record, but that's definitely a quote from someone else. We cannot suffer enough. We cannot feel bad enough to change the world. And yeah. I know that the best thing I can do for this world is wake up, be happy to be alive, f- uh, feel heart centered, feel alive, feel like fun. Uh, you know, all the things I want to see. Yeah. Uh, one of my latest things is like the golden age. Like, like I, I'm, I chose to be in the golden age now. Like mm-hmm. that's it. I'm channeling whatever I think that looks like, like, uh, whatever is, it's like kind of a euphoric, you know, age to be alive. And, and I'm channeling that. And I decided, you know, I'm not waiting thousands of years for the Kali Yuga to pass and, or, you know, to the silver age. To, we're not even in, we're still apparently just at the end of the bronze age, according to the, the, uh, procession of the equinox and all that noise. I don't know if you know, but, but no. we're, still, we're just getting out of the bronze age, which is also known in, in Indian terms is the Kali Yuga. And now we're just going, I don't know the next term, but it's the silver age. And then there's the golden age after that. So we're not, apparently we're just at the end of the bronze, but I'm like, no, I'm going straight to gold. You can guys we skip like, the silver and go straight to gold, please. You can, and you can. And I keep telling people. Is that 5D? Me. Is gold 5D? Like, well, that's the thing. There's no, t- like, there's no time in reality. It's all happening at once. So right. I take that to heart. So we experience like, what we experience. Yeah. I'm not waiting linear time to be in the golden age. I'm, we're doing that now. So yeah. Well, and that's what happens. And and then like, you know, for the viewers out there, how do you know when you're starting to get into to 5D? Like for me, like I have so many synchronicities like all day, every day, and I didn't used to have that. You know, it's because mm-hmm. I have so much focus on the spiritual realms. I talk about spiritual stuff. I, I, I'm i listening to podcasts about this. Like it really does raise your vibration. The higher your frequency is, the more you're going to just be in the right place at the right time and have all these beautiful spiritual rendezvous. You're, you're high. You, you actually are moved onto a path that is your highest available timeline at that, at that moment, you know, at least. So, Mm. you know, I'm not in my highest timeline possible, but I'm at the highest available one to me today, you know, Mm. (laughs) do you know what i mean like that i'm that i'm allowing it's like what are we allowing um and when we're not living in a high frequency it's because we're blocking it off we got to take personal responsibility for that yeah you know we create our own reality people and uh, a lot of it uh has to do with the the content we're digesting from everything that's what i'm saying i have podcasts Mm -hmm. food music and, and everything, uh, it all affects us. Like someone, one of my friends, uh, creative friends that's in Vancouver here, his band is Lucid Afterlife. He's like a lucid uh, dreamer, astral traveler. His name is Nat Jack. Wow. Um, he he told me, he and I'll never forget it. He told me like music is Reiki. I'm sure you've, you've heard of Reiki, right? Have you oh, heard yeah, 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 yeah. So it's like chi healing, qigong energy healing. Music's very healing, yes. And and, and m- music can be can be Reiki uh, and can be healing. And so I used to let myself listen to like sad music a lot more and angry music a lot more. And I yeah. still do every, I still get my doses because it, sometimes it can be very cathartic. Sometimes you want the contrast. You want that polarity so exactly. that you can, yeah. It's cathartic, right? Like you want to feel that feel. Like sometimes, like when I'm sad, I it's it's another form of, of beauty. Like I I find sadness to be a beautiful thing. Like I, I'll say it. I like to cry. I mm-hmm. love it. Like it's. I feel like after I'm done crying, I feel better. I feel lighter, and it's a cathartic experience. And that's the same with music. I mean, I do. And you you don't have any trapped energy. You're getting all that energy out. Like people who don't cry, I guarantee you, they're not in touch with their feelings, and they they have a lot of trapped energy that is holding them back in life. Like everybody needs to cry. It's not a female, male, mm. or not a gender thing at all. Exactly. It's it's a human thing. Yeah. We, we cry, and it's what we're here to experience feelings. You guys, we're supposed to. We're we're Brandon and I. 
neither one of us are toxic positivity people. We've had this conversation, no. but not recorded. So we should mm -hmm. say that right now. Feel your mm -hmm. feelings. Anytime you deny your feelings, or you're like, good vibes only, positive vibes only. That is toxic. We have to feel our feelings because when when you're saying good vibes only, you don't allow yourself to experience normal feelings. When somebody dies, that's sad. You're supposed mm -hmm. to be sad. You're not supposed mm -hmm. to take an antidepressant. I mean, I'm not against antidepressants, guys. Sometimes we need them. But like a, a doctor, a traditional doctor is going to prescribe an antidepressant for being sad when you're supposed to be freaking sad when certain things happen. That's a normal thing. You don't numb it out because those feelings stay in your body and make you sick. You got to release them. Absolutely. Yeah, experience like, them. We're here the to grief, experience 3D. Like, the, the grief that comes with death. You... You could take all the the pills in the world, but that grief, until you feel it, it's gonna stay with you. You have to feel it, yeah. allow it, and then it releases. And then just like I numbed it. out for decades, you, I I didn't take antidepressants, but I numbed out with you alcohol. You know, mm -hmm. some people numb out by watching Netflix all day, just staying distracted. You know, like everyone, I don't have any addiction, but I've never met anyone who didn't really, uh oh, who really didn't have an addiction. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm addicted Every to my animals. I'm addicted to my cell phone. You know, I've just switched my addictions around because, you know, we have to replace the bad addictions with something healthier. Yeah, we all have our vices. Like a gym. And, and life is a balancing act. Like, you know, when when I'm on my phone for too much, I'm like, okay, tomorrow I'm going to read more and get out more. God willing that it's not, it's not going to rain uh, or snow. Um, Cause yeah, I just love, I love to get out when I'm on my phone too much. I'm like, I just need to walk. Oh, I, I have to, to put my phone in another room, Brandon. Like, like sometimes oh, yeah. I'm like, oh my God, like I cannot, what is wrong with me? So I will put my phone in another room and it feels so good to do that. Yeah, at night I, I go airplane mode. I turn my phone. I'm like, I'm done. I'm like, I like, I literally every night me too. there's a point where I'm say I'm done. I put it on airplane mode and I turn my phone off. Like that thing's dead to me. There's you know? people who still think that that's not, you know, that these aren't, they don't have radiation in them. That's how they work. Okay. You know, it, it's, it's not good to have that much screen time. I mean, and as we're doing screen time, but it really is like, that's why I've got these, these are called raw. These are by raw optics. Oh, they're yeah. there. You know, I use them during the day and then I have ones for nighttime that are red. Mm -hmm. um my friend told me about them and and i swear they make a huge difference like if you're in front of the screen and you start getting migraines so those are specifically for screen time then right or, or is that yeah they do something like they do something for your mood r a so raw mm. op optics.com and okay. they, they have ones called joe dispensa they've got yeah they're, they're so it's all um they've got so during the day it like it, it makes you um it does things to for your mood to make you happy and then the, the red ones do stuff to like shut shut down like both of them block frequencies radiation things like that are the uh, red ones for like nighttime like getting sleepy and i'm telling you they work because like so i like to watch tv before i go to bed and mm -hmm. i know that's a no-no but i do it and so i use th that's what i do to make up for it is like i use those glasses while i'm watching and it does it does affect the screen but I cannot last and I usually have a hard time falling asleep. I've only had these for about maybe two months and they I go to sleep. Like I can't stay awake when I have those things on. So would, it's would amazing. You ever, would you ever wear the yellow ones outside? Are those specific, yeah. specifically for screens? No, or no, you like can wear them all day, every day. Um, you can wear them outside. These, these are my reading glasses ones. I have ones that are just also yellow, but mm. I um, can, I, you know what? Since we're talking about them so much, I'm going to put their link below in the comments because they are badass and then i'm not butchering how they work because it is mm. there is a science there's a science behind this technology for these it's not just woo woo and oh, no i mean the thing but i can't I'm, describe it because there, i'm not a scientist well one thing is there is uh on my phone this is samsung there's a blue light filter so i hit the blue light filter and it adds like well it takes away uh, like a lot of the blue light and it, it makes the screen look a little yellowish yeah so yeah, yeah. It's, it's the same thing yeah. so there's something about the screen blue light it's a blue light i think it can give us like headaches and, and yes. I, don't, I don't know the science either but it's definitely about the the light uh vibrations and how it affects our brain and that's how i know like like let's say um i don't have the glasses on i start getting a little bit of a headache and i'm like oh i don't have my glasses on i'll go get them and it, it, it helps 
that's only when I have to be on because some it's part of my job, you know, I'm on zooms all day long and mm-hmm. doing my coaching sessions. So if I have to, then I'll, I'll, I'll be like, sorry guys, but you're going to have to look at me. Like I said, these are my reading ones, but you, my other ones are even bigger. Oh yeah. <laughs> my clients yeah. just, ha- they, they get it. They get it. They have to deal with me looking silly sometimes, but I think, I don't know. Hey, if it works, kind, it works. They're kind of cute. It works. Yeah. <laughs> But anyway, so um, the only other thing that I wanted you to get back into just a little more before, and I know it's are your times. I've taken a lot of your time. <sighs> My cat. Just, I, I got. I can go for another <laughs> forty-five minutes if you can. But we'll see. I do can. want you to talk about the hemisync a little bit more because you mentioned it. But mm. um, the gateway experience. I listened to part of it. It was so weird. This one day, I was interviewing you and another guy for my podcast you both brought that up it was within one hour of each other was it lincoln no it was shea fairbanks shea fairbanks and i was like okay universe i get it i will start listening to these but i I tried listening to them and then here's what it is is you got to have the headphones on and that's messing me up because um you said you said it's better if I'm on my laptop and then I end up you know I ended up not doing it because of the uh pain in the ass part of it but I want to do it so so motivate me more tell me more good stuff about it and and tell the viewers so that and and hemisync h-e-m-i dash s-y-n-c that's what we're saying you guys hemisync the gateway experience it's a meditation put out by the cia uh, it's, it's a guy that worked for the CIA. A guy, I okay. I don't know if it's entire, it's Robert Monroe. I don't know if it's entire, I don't know if it's a CIA project or something that they're like, Hey, we need you to develop this for us. So that way, like these people can remote view. So that's okay. Like. Talk about remote viewing real quick. Cause I think I'm going to have some viewers well, I, that might not know what, what it is. I will, I, but I, I got my, my brain's going in a million okay, directions okay. right now. Okay. First of all, you said laptop, uh, that I, uh, but I think. Yeah, so I was encouraging you not to watch it on your phone, right? Is that why? Yeah, and then so then I never, and then that I should use my headphones uh, using my laptop, and then I just never um, did it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I mean, I think maybe I said that because like if if you watch YouTube on your phone, like the moment you 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 time your phone out, then it, it stops it. So you would have to, you would probably have to watch it. unless you have like YouTube Premium, maybe then I have Premium. Premium. Right, then maybe it will, like if it was something you downloaded. I don't know. I don't have YouTube premium, but I watch it uh, on my PC and I just- well, I meditate, so I have to have, I, I use guided meditations from YouTube, so I have to have premium because there's nothing worse than listening to a meditation and then a commercial shows up oh. in the middle of it. <laughs> yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Uh, or, or your screen times out and then it, it pauses and you got to wake up out of your meditation. So, right. Yeah. Uh, here's here's the kicker. I was fortunate enough to go through the entire hemisync experience, and so there's three waves to each. Uh, well, I don't know if no no. There's I think there's like seven waves, and each wave has like three or four uh, lessons to it or meditations to it. Um, that's not the term they use. Um, but anyways, so it's an entire course. I, it's something I've never done. It's literally a, a meditation course. Uh, and it's all about visualization. And they don't really say it, but it's about remote viewing and self healing. And, and oh, they don't say that. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't think they ever mentioned that it's about like, hey, this is going to make you a remote viewer. But Jay Fairbanks had that experience. He said he was outside of his body listening yeah. to it looking down at himself and it was the first time and he was listening to that and i would and then you told me that something similar but remote viewing you guys is when you're like you're in one place and then you're able to view something that's not in your physical view so like i'm able to be in i'm able to view something in brandon's kitchen right now and i'm mm-hmm. sitting here in cincinnati and he's in vancouver where are you vancouver yeah, I'm in Chilliwack, BC, near near. Oh, okay, yes, yes. Yeah. So that's remote viewing where you're able to kind of travel with your mind, your inner sight instead of your yeah. physical eyes. It's kind of like you know astral projecting. In yeah, a way. you're you're projecting your consciousness into a, a real life locality in this third dimension, and and it's and it's not 
just your imagination, like it's a real tangible place. And and the reason the CIA uh, got people to remote view is because they wanted the secrets of their enemies in, like, say, Russia. They they're sitting there. Someone's remote viewing like their war plans, you know, their battle mm-hmm. plans. Their you know what weapons are they going to be using? And it's and it's not like their imagination. They're actually re- remote. They're viewing- and this is documented, you guys. You can look this up. This is this is actually what the CIA was was using remote viewing. Yeah, and look up. I think it's called the Stargate Project. Might be what the whole CIA remote viewing thing was. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's called Stargate Project. And so yeah, so that's one thing that the the Hemisync uh, Gateway Experience is good for. It was, uh, developed by Robert Monroe, and I'm not sure if he's the voice in uh, a lot of them, uh, but because in the first half of the waves, there's this like older man's voice, and it seems even lower quality, like it was recorded in like the 70s or 80s, and then the other halfway through is this new voice. It sounds more like Dr. Wayne Dyer, more like this. Oh, deep, okay. So uh, I listened to the voice. first two episodes, like I don't know if they're called episodes, but I listened to the first two. That's how yeah. far I got so far. Yeah, so uh, I was fortunate enough to do the the whole course before it got deleted off of YouTube. Mm. So it was branded as the gateway experience. It looked legit. But uh, the thing is, it's actually a course that is still being sold to this day. I went to the website. It's at like a $500 course. Mm. So, I mean, you know, it makes sense that they took it down. It's a, it's a big, you know, project that took a lot of time to develop and it, someone owns it, right? So right. They, but I was lucky enough. It looked legit, like, and it sounded the best because uh, the ones that are still existing, there's one or two that are good, and the rest are just manip, like, just sound terrible, uh, in all types of ways. Like the voice is pitched down, like up, so it sounds like kind of chipmunky, and and the, there's tons of like white noise added or distortions, and I think that's to essentially so they don't get picked up by youtube's ai so you youtube doesn't like see this as a direct copy and so it stays on youtube because it's not being detected as that exact copy so anyways kind of going off on a tangent here but um yeah so the course you can buy it uh but you can also start it on the existing ones uh that are still on youtube and hemi sync what that means is you're syncing your hemi spheres of your brain so hemi spheres yeah yeah, hemi sync, hemi spheres of your brain. So, as many of you may know, where we have the right side and the left side, and the left side is our logical, analytical brain. Our right side is our creative, intuitive, artsy. Brain. Yeah, yeah, and um, and I think most of humanity is like actually left brain dominant. Even the creative type, even if they are left-handed, which here's another fact is that our left brain controls our right side right of, our side body. of the body yeah so it's like crisscrosses like this so uh, i think uh, a lot even if you're left-handed i think humanity humans are left brain dominant because we especially in this society we're, we're we need to be more like analytical i guess and logical and stuff mm-hmm. but i don't know maybe i'm wrong maybe some people are truly like right brain dominant and so that's what hemisync does is it's it uses binaural beats to sync your brain up, you know, which is saying? why we need headphones, because anytime we're listening to binaural beats, and then we're also trying to sync, you, you have to have headphones on for that. Yeah, it works best. Like, the, like a lot of binaural beats will say, like, you want to wear headphones, it'll still like have an effect uh, without but it's absolutely optimal to use headphones because it's playing a specific cre- frequency here and a specific frequency here and they're just like if you listen to them one at a time it sounds like a, just a solid tone but if you combine the tones then it creates this wave in your brain that's only because yeah that yeah. your brain is essentially uh joining these two frequencies to create that wave and sync the hemisphere so cool yeah yeah and so so that uh, another thing is like brain heart coherency that's like your brain and your heart being in sync and so if you combine all that stuff that's why like six seven months ago like i was having some type of spiritual quantum experience that like it was amazing it was absolutely incredible um so yeah check out that i think one last thing i don't know how much time you have but i was just going to talk quickly about the kabbalion yeah go ahead and let's talk about that yeah because we're at about an hour and 20 minutes i think so yeah. yeah 
go ahead and bring that up. And it's just, yeah. it's not that I couldn't talk to you all night. It's that people usually lose their, um, we, we might need to do it episode two because yeah. I don't know that attention span is like so good in these days yeah. in, the, in yeah. the United States anyway. <laughs> Yeah, long. I mean, podcasts are supposed to be long, but on on social media, like uh, it's either we got TikTok time. brains, we got TikTok brains. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the Kabbalion, this was another key that unlocked everything and just made everything make more sense to me. Is the Kabbalion? It's on YouTube. It's still there, and it's legit. It's by the Master Key Society. Is the channel, and there's all types of like amazing. Um, you know, ancient wisdom books, esoteric books, and the Kabbalion is still my favorite. And um, it's spell that so for us. Spell that. Kabbalion is K Y B A L I O N. Kabbalion. Yeah. Kabbalion. I'm glad you so spelled that. <laughs> it's uh, it has to do with the teachings of Hermes Trismegistus, who is uh, quote unquote the scribe of the gods, and he is also known as. Thoth, the Atlantean priest king, and there are there are theories that he is even either like Jesus was a reincarnation of Hermes mm -hmm. Trismegistus of Thoth, or Jesus was a disciple of. This sounds like some Billy Carson level stuff. Yeah, yeah. So, so this guy, like, I'd like to say that we all have a fractal of Mr. Hermes Trismegistus of his consciousness has permeated all of humanity at this point, like. Um, and so that's why this book is so amazing because like, this is his teaching, like the teachings of Hermes Trismegistus and they're, they're of seven principles. And the principles are mentalism, correspondence, vibration, polarity, rhythm, cause and effect, and gender. And, um, it, one of the, just I'm going to definitely check this out. I, and, and thank you for introducing me to it. This is an example of, you know, one of those things like that's why I wanted to talk to you is because you were bringing stuff up and I'm like, I've never heard of this. And I do feel like, like my little world got a little bit saturated because I've had so many firsthand experiences. I listen to, I, I'm, I'm constantly learning new stuff every day. And you do get to a point where it gets exciting when somebody mm -hmm. introduces you to new things. I love it. Yeah. When it's something new, like that's why when, when I, you know, because I knew about Billy Carson years ago, but then I like I retired from conspiracy theories. But then then I was like, no, no, Billy he's Carson. not a conspiracy no, theorist. He's not. But like a lot of the stuff he he people you know, would. Yeah, people would label. I got it. Like, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the moment I say Anunnaki, you'll be like, oh, OK, I mean, conspiracy theorist. Yeah, yeah cause, right. Like, it's, it's yeah, in that realm. I got gotcha. so, so where was I going? Yeah, the um, the Kabbalion is, is incredible. And uh, it's really not long. It's it's well, it's four hours. <laughs> so, so chip away at it. Um, but uh, it's but it's a book. Something... It's a book, right? Yeah. It's a, but it's an audio book on YouTube. Audio so book. You, so you don't have to read it, and you can literally like it could be one of your meditations. You just lay back and just focus on on this audio book. Four hours long. I've already listened to it twice, and I I'll finish it, it this weekend, Brandon. I will listen it. to it this weekend for sure. Yeah. It's literally what I would just describe as universal truths. That yeah, because I know about a lot of those laws that you mentioned. So I want to hear this different perspective. Maybe maybe it's going to be different stuff on the same topics. Yeah, right? and, and, and very like succinct and to the point. It kind of reminds me of A Course in Miracles in its own way. It's just Course very, in Miracles is, isn't the very succinct. <laughs> well, yeah, you're right. You're I'm right. I'm gonna be getting through that for the rest no, of my freaking life. You're, you're right. Like <laughs> the Course in Miracles is not succinct, but it reminds me because the principles in it, I guess, coincide with these universal laws. Okay. That's why they yeah. I love it. Uh, so okay, yeah. One of my one of my biggest takeaways is is that uh, is polarity, the principle of polarity that that everything is is of the same thing just in different degrees so like mm. temperature so like hot and cold are of the same thing so you, but they're just on different degrees of the pole so to speak and so that was one thing that that cracked open my mind but uh, the most powerful one for me and it's the reason i i don't have gurus and i refuse to have gurus is we that do, but we have people that we love and respect yeah. But exactly. we don't we don't consider them a guru, right? And I don't think yeah. I don't think a, a someone who would even be at that level would want you to call them a guru anyway. 
Exactly. Like Muji, for example, he's like, I'm, I'm not a teacher. I'm just a guide. I just point in the direction. A guide. And yeah. Don't look at my finger. Look at the moon, right? Like mm -hmm. I'm pointing to the moon, not my finger, but inevitably there are people who, you know, they bow like they, they I know this guy I and know. that's, that's not his doing like that. People end up worshiping these. He's gurus. like, I'll take it. <laughs> and look, gurus are gurus. I'm not trying to like to take away from the term guru, but I chose to not have gurus because I refuse to live my life by one book or one person or yeah. one ideology. And, and the Kabbalion really unlocked this for me. That's like, yeah, that's your path because um, which principle was it? It was, um, was it cause and effect or correspondence? It was one of the principles. But anyways, it speaks that 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 for every truth there's an equal and opposite truth and that all truths are only half truths and that's why everyone has their own truth that resonates with them and that's why in the greatest spiritual teachings you can still find something that's like ah oh, that doesn't sit well with me so you take the truth that resonates with you and you you leave yeah it and that's why i love I like that it. and, and yes. it, it also depends on you know the time like we all are um changing and learning throughout our lifetimes. We're always growing and expanding. I believe that's the reason we're here is to grow and expand. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to start this channel is to, to so we could all like do that together and inform this community because I, I, I also felt like it was kind of lonely too. You know, like when you feel like you're, you're awake to things, but people around you aren't. So that's why I wanted to get everybody together and like create this channel where we could all, you know, keep expanding together. And I don't think there's an end. I don't think there's an end to expansion. No, absolutely. And, and yeah. I wanted to bring up since you brought up earlier, uh, the, you know, Greg Braden and Joe Dispenza for for viewers who might be a little skeptical still, they are experts at both science and spirituality, and they beautifully blend the two together in a way that is like, it's, it's going to just feed your soul to where you're like, oh, okay, that makes sense. And no, it's not woo woo. I happen to love the woo woo terminologies. I use it. I prefer that because I'm not a scientist and I feel like I'm not, I'm not going to sound like at my most intelligent when I'm trying to talk like a scientist. So I stay away from that. Although I understand, I understand it. I, I don't speak the term terminology. If you want to listen to people who actually do speak that way greg Braden, greg with two g's g-r-e-g-g -G, and dr joe dispenza yeah he was um i think it was like 1980 86 87 maybe where he was um on the biking portion of a triathlon and he was hit by another vehicle and he was paralyzed and like brandon mentioned earlier he he healed himself with his mind through vis visualization and through connecting with God. He also brought God into it. Um, he is very spiritual, but he gives you the science. He, he puts them together. He puts like, he, he was a chiropractor. So he understood, like, I wouldn't be able to visualize the stuff he was able to visualize because he understood all the anatomy, you know, and all yeah. the, the spine uh, that yeah. where he understood exactly how he was paralyzed and what he needed to visualize. Like, and he said, God, if, if you help me do this, if you if you let me heal myself, I am going to dedicate the rest of my life to teaching other people that they can heal themselves too with their minds, with the mind body connection. You brought up mind mind heart coherence. Mm -hmm. um, the mind heart coherence, you guys, like mm -hmm. a lot of times these positive effort. Yes, great book. Yes. Um, Becoming supernatural is what he's holding up. Um, you, if, if we think something, if we say a positive affirmation, but we don't feel it in our heart, I mean, it's great to say positive affirmations. Um, eventually you might be able to, you might be able to fake it till you make it kind of thing. But the, the quicker way to do it is to actually get to the point where you can feel it in your heart. Like if you say, I am the smartest person in the world, but your, your heart doesn't, you don't really feel that you can say it all day long, every day, but you got to feel it too, in order to create it in your reality. And then there's all kinds of tricks that I teach in how to do that. You know, affirmations is one of the ways mm -hmm. to do that, you know, because our subconscious mind just believes whatever we tell it, um, whether it's fact or fiction. But when we actually tweak it and ask a question, 
then then our subconscious is going to like try to figure out a way to make it real to make it happen to conspire and that's that's kind of like too long to talk about on this video but you guys um it's so important though to have that mind heart coherence i'm glad you brought that up greg braden mm -hmm. is um definitely the one to look to if, if you're if you're like law of attraction isn't working for me um he does a big expansion on that you know if you don't want to hire a one-on-one -on -one coach he does a law of attraction expansion um kind of talking about the seven mirrors that's a good one to look up Mm, have you have you know. watched that i'll send it to you okay. and you're gonna love that the seven mirrors is is really important and that's where i learned that uh, you know because people think law of attraction is black and white but like oh we also attract anything that we have some sort of energetic spark so it doesn't have to be that something that you know it, it's just a spark so it could be something negative too because it does law of, the law of attraction does it doesn't matter if it's good or bad if you want it or you don't want it what are you focused on what do you have a big spark with like ooh, oh i hate narcissistic people i hate people well guess what now there's a spark because you hate that and that causes an energetic spark and then you attract you attract it and yeah. then you attract what you judge that's another yeah. one. So you yeah, can't sit that. around and judge people and then not expect to have those people, same type of personalities, different person, but the same shit, different person. If you, if you judge people, you're going to be like, why do I always attract liars and cheaters? I'm not a liar and cheater. And because that's it's the not, affirmation. So it's, that's the affirmation to get more of that, right? Well, basically, it's just a feeling you don't have to like so like I this was this is a self story I used to always attract liars and cheaters manipulators narcissists mm -hmm. that's and I'm, I'm like and so when I first learned about law of attraction a long time ago I was like this doesn't make sense because we attract what we are I'm not a liar I'm not a cheater I'm not a manipulator what the fuck well guess what I judge the crap out of them so I had well, to do a thing. judgment detox you put it in a form of a question you're like why am I attracting all these liars and cheaters and narcissists so I'm like well that's that's the affirmation that you were talking about right and so you're affirming it oh that's it interesting I see what you're saying now I didn't know what you were talking about well no I, I was just yeah I see what you're saying, but yeah, th this was before I knew about affirmations or affirmations or anything. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm just gonna, basically, I'm just at the end of the day, you guys, you cannot judge things. If you, if you, unless you want something to keep showing up in your life over and over, you got to get over the hatred. You got to get over the judgment. You got to get over all that stuff because you're attracting exactly what you don't want when you judge something and when you yeah. hate something. You're just going to keep seeing more of it because energy flows where our attention goes. So you keep paying attention to that. Yeah, and, Guess and what? one last point for me to touch on what you're talking about. Sun shining right? in your face hard too. I know. Oh, thank goodness. I, I'm going for a walk after this. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> um, it's like glaring. Okay, but yeah, Greg Braden, Joe Dispenza, what they did so magnificently for me was to put it in scientific, uh, practical terms. And and this is this is not to knock Abraham Hicks. She kind of started my whole law of attraction thing. Like I still love I still Esther Hicks. To yeah, Esther Hicks. I still listen to Esther because uh, it's amazing. And she's got her own spin, her own energy. Um, and even though I couldn't like justify it scientifically, I still resonated with it and listened to it all the time. And that started my law of attraction journey. But what what really tied it all together was Joe Dispenza and Greg Braden putting it in yeah. like quantum physics and science and, and then it just and then it exploded and now it's it's yeah. expanding so that's why I wanted to make sure that anyone watching this if, if they have that little skeptical mind a little bit because I did I never did like I just would go with innately like I just like when the first time I heard Abraham Hicks the first time I heard that I knew I was like, ooh, like it was so resonating with immediately. Mm -hmm. And I've I've like shared Abraham with countless people and it's not the same. They're like, what in the hell did you send me? What am I listening to? They think it's weird. Mm -hmm. And then I found out from Lincoln, Lincoln Gergar, the channel that you were talking about. I I mm -hmm. did a channel session with him. He did an hour long channeled message for me. Um, you know, I hired him. And one of the things was that Abraham, Abraham, the is was mm -hmm. one of my guides throughout like 20 plus lifetimes so that's mm -hmm. why and then i heard that again 
from another person who channels that Abraham, actually two more people that Abraham's one. So that's why, but if Abraham's not one of your guides, like, so I've like known Abraham many, many lifetimes. So that's why I was like, well, the first time I heard an Abraham Hicks, um, like, I think it was a YouTube thing, actually. The first time I ever heard it, I was like, oh, it was familiar because like my soul, it was soul recognition. It just right? resonates. It yes, instantly yeah. resonates. And, and I'm like, and why doesn't everybody else love this? Well, and, and, not and one of their guys. Thing, it's because it sounds like people are very like, no, I, I don't want to say people are, but like some people are very like in still in the surface level of things. And it sounds delusional. Like, and yeah. like a lot of like people will say this, a lot of teachers and guides will say like, you actually need to be delusional and believe your delusions, right? Because people are like, oh, I need to see it to believe it. But this is about believing it before you see it, right? Yep. And quick fun fact, um, the actual Abraham was apparently a contemporary of Hermes Trismegistus. So like they were bros back in the day, like Hermes, like this is ancient times, uh, Abraham and and Ermi. But Abraham, of, Abraham of Abraham Hicks, to my understanding, is a is a collective group of souls. Like a collective consciousness entity. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. And well, the I mean, we don't really know who. But I like I was a student. Like I was a student of Abraham for you know, like I was a follower for many lifetimes. Yeah. You know, but, but but I don't know that Abraham was in physical form, but I might have to ask Lincoln that. I'm not sure. Well, here's here's the thing is like we don't really know who like Hermes wait, was he is he just a, another collective consciousness, which he could be just another collective consciousness that keeps reincarnating. Yeah. It's said that he is also Lao Tzu, and like I said, he could oh. be Jesus, or Jesus could be a disciple of him. So I think I think he could be another collective consciousness and might not be an actual physical form. I could be wrong because like he could have incarnated for all we know, Abraham could have incarnated in, in one or multiple avatars. Yeah. So, so but I think Lincoln said that I, th I thought Lincoln, I'm going to have to ask him because I think he did say that, that he was, uh, there was a, a collective consciousness that was in human form in a few of the lifetimes. So that it, literally that I was like, I think, I think that was my guru, you know, like, right. and it's just, it's just crazy to me to think that like, like Hermes Trismegistus and Abraham were like, they were homies back. Like they were the same era. Same well, who life. else, who else vibrated at the level? They had to be, they had to and be like, best friends. Yeah. I don't know much about St. Germain, but it's not St. Germain, like the same kind of deal saint or? germain is an ascended master um and that's like a different realm that we'll ha i'll have to ask tara arnold about that one we've named yeah. off so many people I know, this is hilarious so heavy, people uh, they, they need to listen again and write down all these names because everyone we mentioned is absolute gold absolute yeah. gold Life and and you guys um i'm gonna put all of brandon's information and the links below like i mentioned earlier so give him a follow he's got a lot of great content i think follow him on instagram if you do nothing else follow him on instagram yeah, tre tread lightly if uh, but you know get ready to have fun and not take things so seriously and you know oh they, we'll they've got fun. they've gotten a little taste they've gotten a taste of what they're getting into you right know. yeah Tread they, know. <laughs> they know and I hope um, you like raccoons because i've been into raccoons lately <laughs> for whatever reason yeah go ahead the right people will follow you <laughs> and so i'm going to put his information below anyone who is a spiritual junkie and likes talking about this kind of stuff near-death experiences, weird stuff. Like, you know, sometimes, you know, I haven't had really an alien conversation. I want to get into that. I I want Daryl Anka. Hey, oh, if so anyone are. if anyone watching this knows Daryl Anka, Daryl Daryl Anka, well, give him Anka. a call. Well, hey, I'll tag him. I follow him. I'll tag him in the in the Instagram. Post I follow him too, but yeah, you tag him because I'm be tagging him. I'm tagging him. Tag and, yeah, him. Maybe, I don't know, I'll invite myself to a part two. Maybe we'll do a part two uh, this one day. I don't know. Why not? You invited yourself to this one. <laughs> just, that's it. Ma it's done. Manifested. Done. Okay. Yeah, we'll definitely have a part two because this was an easy conversation. Time flew. People are going to be like, oh my God, this is the longest one ever. Mm -hmm. So um, thank you so much, Brandon. And to the viewers, thank you for tuning in. Please subscribe, share this with anyone else that you know is, if you're not a spiritual junkie, share it with someone who is. And on that note, Brandon, thank you so much. Oops, I accidentally hit stop recording. So I'm not sure if you guys are gonna get this or not, but I think I was saying, just please send it to somebody, hit like on this episode if you liked it and share it with whoever you think about it.
Mm -hmm. and make sure to comment and yeah, share it with everyone. And also make sure you, you, you hit to get all the notifications of spiritual transformation, oh, yeah. because if you don't, then it might get buried, but you want to see all the notifications for spiritual transformation with Mary Beth. That way you can always see the latest content. Thank you for saying that. Yeah, because we do have a new guest on every Friday. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Have thank a you. wonderful day.